Traders, how are you? Marcello, founder of the Day Trading Academy, co-founder of Speed Up Trader. Today we got a lot of news in the weekly recap, both good and bad news for Bitcoin, in addition to a little bit of, of a disparity between the rich and the poor. Let's get going. So Monday, the market was higher overall. Tuesday, the market was lower due to the announcement, the news of the more strict lockdown in Germany, which at the end of the day, Merkel, because of the huge backlash, was extended all the way to the 18th of April past Easter, a family gathering that she went ahead and tracked it back and said that she was wrong. The Dow went down, had its worst day in three weeks on Tuesday, went down 0.94%. Wednesday, the market was lower as tech stocks were sold off in favor of the energy sector. If you guys know what's happening with the Suez Canal, 12% of the world trade. Remember, most of you guys don't know how things move, right? When you order something, a lot of times it's put on a boat in a container and it's shipped most times. And from there, it's a... Uh, semi truck game, you know, the, the trucks that you see on the highway, the big 18 wheelers, that, that's generally how everything has traveled around. So 12% of the world traffic goes through the Suez Canal and there's a huge oil tanker, which is about 400 meters in length, the size of the Eiffel Tower, that's literally sideways stuck in the Suez Canal. Now that's a big problem because 12% of the world trade goes through there, about 10% or excuse me, 10 tankers are stuck in the beginning of the week. That's gone up to a, a few dozen. And now there's a situation where a lot of people are now interested more in the energy sector because obviously if oil can't get through there, there's a situation where there's not enough supply. If there's not enough supply and the demand relatively stays the same, obviously that's gonna go up. So that's basically what happened there. All that just to tell you that the market went down on Wednesday. Thursday, the market was higher. Investors sold the tech shares and purchased underpriced stocks. Friday, the market was higher. For the week, the Dow went up 1.36%. The S&P 500 went up 1.57%. And NASDAQ, the only negative one, went down 0.58%. In European markets this week, the Swiss market... The Swiss index went up 1.57%, while the Istanbul market in Turkey went down a huge 10.62%. In Latin America and Canada, mostly lower, with Canada dropping about 0.36%. In Africa and the Middle East, Nigeria, the biggest winner, at 2.17%, while the, the mostly negative ones were under about a percent or so. And in the far, far east, Indonesia, the biggest loser, at 2.59% negative, with Taiwan up one46 in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency news, Ray Dalio, which you might know, mega billionaire and the founder of the world's largest hedge fund. He's also known as a legendary investor. He is now warning that Bitcoin could be banned by the U.S. government. And he's he's tracing the comparison to the circumstances of when they made gold illegal in the 1930s. Now, he said this before. Right, He talked about how it could happen before, then he kind of got on the Bitcoin bandwagon and now he's back. And this is what I've always kind of mentioned as the potential risk in Bitcoin. I, you know, I always told you guys, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. I have no doubt that it's going to make record highs again. But, you know, India now is passing a law saying that it's going to be completely legal there to own. What if the U.S. does it? Right. Yellen which is the, if I'm not mistaken, the Treasury Secretary. Uh, I don't know her title, but she's one of the big wigs in the finance department in the U.S. She is against just forcefully against Bitcoin. So this is always kind of the challenge. Obviously, a lot of people say it's decentralized. You know, they're not going to be able to stop it, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, if you invest in Bitcoin or you think it's going to go to the moon, that's uh, that's going to be your decision. Now, the good news with Bitcoin this week, that was the bad news. Fidelity, which is one of the largest brokerages in the United States and the biggest manager of 401ks in the world. Well, I should say in the world. In the U.S., they are launching. They want to launch a Bitcoin ETF. Tesla also stated that they're going to accept Bitcoin for payments for Tesla vehicles, and they're not going to convert the actual Bitcoins into fiat currency like the U.S. dollar. They're going to actually keep it in Bitcoin, which means, you know, that's another thing, right? Because Elon Musk is a genius, and obviously he understands now about Bitcoin. Remember, he bought a huge chunk of it. If I'm not mistaken, it was $1.5 So that could be some good news for some of you Bitcoin guys as well. 
Bitcoin is overall lower for the week. It went down 4.98% to just over 55,500. It's up nine over 90% in 2001. And year over year, it's just over, it's positive just over 762%, excuse me, 726%. In commodities, Saudi Aramco, which is the biggest oil company in the world, announced that they're in their income, their net income dropped by a whopping 44.4% to just $49 billion. Oh, it's got to suck making that amount of money. They're saying that they're going to drop their expenditures in 2021. They did maintain their dividend of $75 billion, but obviously they're going to, they're, you know, they're, they're hurting a little bit or they were hurting a little bit, obviously with the quarantines initially in 2020, everything came to a stop. And that obviously hurt their production. The Suez Canal, I told you guys about that as well. There was one piece of uh, news that I didn't add to that was was there was a there's a company called Suzano SA, which is the biggest producer of wood pulp, which is it's a raw material used in things like. Um, bath tissue, you know, uh, toilet paper, things like that are saying that there's going to be a global shipping crunch due to the fact that a lot of these ships are stuck and can't get through the shipping canal and the Suez Canal. So it looks like we're going to have another run on toilet paper. So go and stock up. U.S. crude for the week went down 2.24%. It's at $60.07. International Brent went up 0.06% to about 64.57. And now they're at 14 month highs. I don't know if you guys remember, for those of you that watch the old channel, before it got banned, I talked to you guys about in, in March when oil went negative, how now was the time to look at potential investments in oil and things like the big, uh, the big oil because they're not going out of business. And now you can see that we definitely have recovered all the way to a 14 month high. The world uses oil. We're still not completely electric. So we're not even a portion of the economies in the world aren't even a poor, a big portion electric yet. And so we still need oil, especially long term. Other than that, precious metals for the week went down. Oil went down, or excuse me, gold went down 0.66 to about 1,734 where silver went down down 4.85% to 2513. I got back into some of the miners that I looked at. For those of you guys as well, there was a there was a great video I did at the seminar that we had in March, excuse me, February 2020, where I talked about what I think was going to happen to Bitcoin. And I can re-upload that if you guys want me to here on, on this channel, the new one, after they banned the old one. But um, definitely probably going to see a good move sometime soon in, in these uh, in these precious metals. Overall for the week in financial and banking news, 10% of Americans now control 97% of the capital income in the nation. Since 2008, half of the increase in income went to the wealthiest 1%, while th the richest 3% collectively own more wealth than the 160 million poorest citizens. Hmm. Gotta suck for rich people, huh? You guys, they're gonna go after you real quick. The United States dollar went up. It's reaching four month highs as part of the reason, for example, we're having that down push on the precious metals. The yields on US treasuries dropped as well. Uh, central banks in Colombia, Mexico, South Africa, and the Philippines held their interest rates steady, while the more hawkish approach to Brazil, Russia, and Turkey in terms of central banks around the world. And US Capitol News in Washington, D.C., the Democrats are looking to make the capital a state. The Republicans obviously are stating that they are um, the founding fathers wouldn't have wanted that and also insisting that Congress doesn't even have a right to listen to be able to grant statehood to D.C. Now, the Dems want to do this due to the fact that that would add two seats to the Senate. That would literally be almost impossible to have the Republicans take control of the Senate in the future, which would essentially allow them to be able to control things. So that's kind of the battle that's going on in there. Democratic State Rep Cannon was arrested in Georgia by state troopers on Thursday after she knocked on the door of the Republican Governor Brian Kemp State House officer as he was signing a controversial elections bill uh, in a closed-door ceremony. A number of bills have been passed by the Republican-controlled state legislator legislature to be able to pass more stringent election integrity laws after the 2020 election. In economic news, the initial U.S. unemployment claims for the week of March 20th fell below 700,000. Last week, the prior week, it was up to 781,000. We're still, however, 9.5 million jobs below the level where we were at before the actual coronavirus pandemic started. The labor participation rate in as well is down to a 47-year low.
U.S. consumer spending fell by the more than expected in February to a 10-month low. Now, remember that consumer spending, you know, I know a lot of these numbers are really technical, and I try to kind of gloss over a lot of the more technical numbers, but the consumer spending number is an important one, and the reason why is because almost 70% of the economy in the U.S. is consumer spending. The majority of industrialized nations, not poor and rich, but industrialized, you know, a country like Colombia, for example, is industrialized. So, the majority is consumer spending. So this number, if it goes up, it's good for the economy. If it goes down, it's not good for the economy. Just just to kind of give you an, an overall breakdown. Now, this number fell more than expected in February by most than 10 months. So that means that less people are going out and spending money, which means that the economy isn't moving as much, even though that'll probably pick up due to the fact that everybody's starting to get their stimulus checks. In corporate news, shares of GameStop fell 6.55% after they missed expectations after their annual earnings report. The shares are still up over 800% in 2021 and 4,000% year over year with a market cap of about $12.6 billion. In trade news, the U.S. is blocking Venezuela from proceeding in a dispute for sanctions that were placed in 2018 and 19 for the World Trade Organization. Venezuela wanted to have them review it, but obviously because the U.S. owns a lot of the votes, they're not going to let them continue with that. In technology, smart tires are already in use with tire companies. Companies adding special sensors inside of the tires, which is going to allow to to develop a lot more technologies and become more widespread and a lot cheaper. And a lot of the new electric vehicles, there's a situation where there's a lot more technology and it's a lot better system to be able to use. And, you know, that can tell, for example, when the car is slipping and things like that than the actual stability control systems that cars use now. And investment news, almost millions, even though millions of Americans have already been vaccinated, about 90% of the country still is not vaccinated. So the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, is still recommending people not to travel. But Saturday did mark the 10th day of over 1 million passengers through American airports, which means that Americans are largely ignoring the CDC. And since the first time since the pandemic began, Again, air travel is up from a year ago. So slowly but surely, we're getting back to normal. Porsche is going green. They're stating that by 2030, they're going to go carbon neutral and have 80% of their cars and SUVs completely electric or be a plug-in hybrid. The only exception to this is the infa infamously amazing 911, which they sold 1 million cars over multiple generations since 1963. So that's going to be one of the last ones to actually be converted if they convert them at all. And two of North America. American's largest railroad companies, I have the names here, give me a second, Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern are going to combine in a deal worth $25 billion, which is going to be the first time there's going to be one network from Canada, the U.S., all the way to to through the United States, I should say. Other than that, U.S. existing home sales climbed in February to an annual rate of 5.77 million units, which is the highest since February 2007. Total existing home, single-family homes, which are you know, normal houses, town home, condos, or co-ops are up 6.5% since a month before. And this is the eighth consecutive month where, where sales have actually risen. And it hasn't been this hot since February 2007. You remember what happened in 2008? The crash. Other than that, GM is extending production cuts in North America due to the global semiconductor shortage. A lot of these car companies are taking a beating due to the fact that they can't get their hands on the semiconductors between droughts and, and flood, not droughts. Actually, it is droughts. The droughts in Taiwan, where the majority, remember that the, the majority of the semiconductors are in two places, which is North Korea, North Korea, and South Korea, and also Taiwan. And so, you know, they've been shut for two months already during the pandemic last year when chip orders were canceled. Now they're going to have to continue with the shutdowns. Microsoft is in talks to buy Discord Inc., which is the messaging platform that a lot of people use to organize events and gamers and things like that. The, the value that they're putting on it is going to be $10 billion. They were valued at $7 billion in December. And the last big purchase for Microsoft was in 2016 for LinkedIn for $26.2 billion. International events, there's still a dispute with the North Stream or Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is a pipeline that's going to go from Russia under the bottom of the ocean all the way to Germany to deliver natural gas. This is going to be a problem for Biden due to the fact that the U.S. law requiring sanctions on companies that help build the actual pipeline are German companies. So remember, Germany is the most important economy in 
all of Europe and also the fourth largest in the world. It's still US, China, Japan, and then Germany. I told you about Chancellor Merkel canceling the quarantine after the backlash. The Prime Minister of Japan on Thursday stated that North Korea launched two ballistic min missiles into the sea near Japan, which is raising tensions at, You know, with the Olympics coming up in Japan. Remember, thousands of Venezuelans are fleeing co to Colombia after there's been military operations in the border province of Apure. Say that three times fast. Apure. Can you roll your R's? Apure. Um, so that situation, not a good thing. Unfortunately, you know, Colombia's, uh, taking on quite a bit of Venezuela is in a good way, right? Because they need to go somewhere, but, um, it's not going to be good for Colombia because of the strain on the system. Remember, Colombia isn't a rich country after all. Brazil is seeing a record over 100,000 coronavirus cases on Thursday after it surpassed 300,000 deaths due to the coronavirus pandemic. This is only second to the United States. And I just lost my place here. Give me one second. The U S has had just over 69,000 cases in a total of 30.1 million infections and 546,000 deaths. And an unusual fact this week, Trump is marking his return with the new social media platform, which representative says they're going to be ready in about two or three months. He's added that there's going to be tens of millions of people on the platform. In addition to, he's stating that they're going to redefine the social media space and take the control away from these massive companies. And in 2020, saw the worst economic numbers in history, I should say, since the worst recession ever in World War II. Nearly two-thirds of the world's billionaires, however, amassed even greater fortunes with their wealth increasing 20%, and many of them are relocating to countries and areas where the tax regimes and societies are overall friendlier to the mega-rich. That's your news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next week.